All right, what you're looking at here is the spire stencil that has been cut up. And the stencil itself is made up of several different elements. So here, this main piece here is what the stencil is named after. It's a spire. It's actually, um, here in New England, we know this as a foxtail. And then this design here is basically a daisy or a coneflower. And then this is a leaf from a rose bush. And these are rose buds. So I drew all of these floral designs based on flowers that are in New England gardens that I like to visit. And in particular, this foxtail was up at the, um, the Coastal Maine Botanical Garden up in Booth Bay Harbor in Maine, which is one of my favorite botanical gardens. And I find a lot of inspiration there for designs. So that's how the design for this stencil came about. And in this little demo, I'm going to show you how to use these different elements and we'll start with the coneflower here. Okay, I'm gonna set these other stencils aside. And what I have here is a book of mixed media paper. Okay, it's mixed media, which means that the paper is a little bit heavier than sketchbook paper. And I'm going to start on white to show you what this daisy or coneflower stencil would look like, just starting right on a white piece of paper. Over here, I have some acrylic paint. I've got sap green, yellow ochre, cadmium, light yellow, and then titanium white. And on this, um, this palette paper here, I've just got a little bit of the different paints. And I think what I'll do is start with the green, add a little bit of the ochre to it to tone it down. Um, really, I just want to get going here so I can show you what a nice high contrast would look like on the paper. So let's start with doing, and I guess, you know, you wouldn't normally have green flowers, doesn't really matter. Just go with whatever colors you like. The paint is dry, and I'm just using a little bit, and tapping, 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 tapping. So you can see that the color here is just going to go into the parts of the stencil that are cut out. And then the opposite of a stencil would be a mask. And the um, part of this spire stencil with the, uh, the um, the way I've got things cut out, sometimes some elements are more like a mask and other elements are more like a stencil. So um, in other words, the petals on this upper side of this daisy are acting more like a mask. So if you wanted the petals to be a color, you would paint the substrate first. But I'm gonna show you what this looks like without having painted the paper first, the petals will be white. So you can see the petals are white on that side and on this side where it's a stencil, the paint, the acrylic paint shows through. Okay, so that would be directly, using this stencil directly on white paper. Let's do the same with the leaf. And the leaf, the way it will come in the stencil is you will cut this piece out from the outline. And it's nice to use the outline to add some color first, and I'll do that quickly. And I think what I'll do is I'll do green on the light side. I'm gonna do it really pretty lightly because I want this to dry fast so I can show you. So I'm going to fill in this leaf shape Okay, that's more or less filled in. And then you take, this is basically a mask at this point, right? Because um, what, uh, ooh, the paint is not going to go obviously where the stencil part is. So it's, it's a combination stencil mask. And what I'll do is I'll use this piece 
like that. And I'm just going to move the stencil off a little bit just to make it a little more dynamic. So it's not aligned directly on top of where I just painted. And then I'm going to use darker green, much darker. Get some high contrast there. Okay, so uh, just hold that down like that. So I'm holding both of them down together. All right. And this leaf pattern is based on a rose bush that I have in my garden called a Rosa Ragosa. It's like a beach rose. My house is close to the coast here. I'm just about 10 miles away from the coast. So a lot of the plants that live around here are coastal in, in feel. And um, there we go. So you repeat this around the back of, you know, to start, you can repeat it around the back of, the background, I should say, of um, art papers that you're making. And then you can do uh, a flower as a focal point on top. So that's one of the things I like to do with these leaves. And then you can use it without, the sur without using this surrounded and, and you'll get a different effect. Okay, so let's, let's go, let's go down here like this. I'm going to blend out. And move my fingers around as I'm holding this down. Get some more paint. And then I'm slowly lightening up the paint as I go. You just keep blending the paint as you're stenciling. It's nice to have a few different colors on your palette to do that. So there, that's looking nice. So that's what you would do if you wanted to start with paper that's white and it hasn't been painted with a color yet. So that is that for the rose leaves and the daisy. And now let's take a look at the other stencils from the Spire stencil. And I'll start with another page here. And what I'd like to do is show you how you can do some lovely buds. These are rose buds and this is looking down more or less at the top of the rose bud and then this is a more of a profile view, a side view where you can see some of the leaves and then the bud itself. And for these I think what I'll do is add a little more, do more of a, a yellow color. So there we go, there we go. That's lovely and this again is a really nice element to use in creating botanical uh, mixed media papers for art journaling or to use as a pattern for uh, an underpainting when you're doing a botanical canvas painting and that's probably um, how I would use it most often, but also to create art papers for art journaling. The final stencil in this spire stencil is what's actually a spire itself. And this is a foxtail. It's a beautiful, tall, very tall flower that you'll often see in border plantings. And I'm going to show you how you can use it with acrylic paint, just as I've been doing before. Use it as a stencil right on this white paper, okay? It's a fairly large stencil, 
so you'll probably need to reload your sponge a few times and I'm going to change color as I work my way up start down here with yellows and this yellow ochre and I just keep sort of changing the colors as I go just so it's it's a little more interesting than having just one solid color the entire way up and that's how the flower is too when you see one of these foxtails they have more color where the where the blooms are and the blooms start at the bottom and then as the plant grows taller these are the buds that haven't bloomed yet it's a really great flower i love this flower i don't have any in my garden but they have them all over the coastal maine botanical garden up in booth bay maine and they're really really fabulous okay so as i go up I'm going to start using a soft green and I like to tap around and sometimes you know blend the colors that way by tapping over what I had just painted before I'm gonna go all the way up to the top of this stencil that's just the very tippy top of this spire and there we have it. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, that's lovely. And this, this is a really fun stencil to use when you're doing a, a canvas painting of flowers and you can do these and alternate how high they are next to each other, alternate the colors you use and you can create you can create a design that has the feeling of an English border planting, kind of a cottagey, cottage garden. And that's what I had in mind when I designed this stencil. I was thinking about cottage gardens around here, around New England. And I like to use floral elements as um, background patterns for doing underpainting. Um, obviously for doing lots of great papers for art journaling, for mixed media art, for doing paper collage. You can just keep layering and layering and then it'll be this really fabulous pattern to cut up and use in lots of other projects. So that is the spire pattern, the spire stencil.